Welcome back everyone to our Tuesday teaching, January 5th, 2021. Topic is called, Where's Your Faith? So we're just going to get started and I'm going to read Mark chapter 5, starting at verse 25. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitudes thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. It's the kind of faith we're supposed to have. That's a childlike faith we're talking about yeah. that Gina mentioned in part one. Yeah. This lady had an issue of blood going on for 12 years. That's a long period of time. And getting she's growing worse and worse. But her faith, she just knew that if she could touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, she was going to be made well. And Jesus responds to her and tells her, go in peace and be healed of your affliction. You know, your, your faith has made you well. Yes. It's very important to know these things. It is. And you know what? There was an important point that someone was teaching on, and it might have been Jonathan Shuttlesworth, but when he was talking about that story, people think, oh, so she knew if she touched him, she'd be healed. You have to go back to that time and realize that a woman with an issue of blood like that was considered unclean. And if you're unclean, you're not supposed to be around other people. You right. were supposed to be isolated because they you were viewed as being unclean and sort of like an untouchable. Um, she, she would have been killed for that. Yes. So, I mean, it was a major act of faith for this woman because it says that he was in a crowd. So this is a major act of faith mm -hmm. for this woman to come out of her dwelling and get in the midst of this crowd and push through so that she can touch him. That was the level of faith that she had, that no matter what else happened, it didn't even matter because she knew that she knew because she was risking her life doing this. She knew that when she touched him, she would be made well. That is huge faith. Amen. Read these yeah. stories for yourself. That's in Mark chapter 5. Uh, I highly recommend reading all of Mark 5. It's amazing. It's just, uh, it just like a day in the life of Jesus of this miracle after miracle after miracle. In the same chapter, he raises a, a girl that was dead, a 12-year-old girl that is dead. He raises her from the dead. And then in John 14, 12, Jesus tells us the works that he did, we're going to do, and greater works because he's going to his father. Right. So he's telling us that we could have the type of faith, dead raising faith. And we want to have that. See, Absolutely. we're just, we're not content where we're at. We, if you want to see a dead person raised, number one, you have to lay hands on them and pray for them to get up. Now, right. fortunately, Gene and I have done that. Uh, many times, and we, we have laid hands okay. on people at a funeral. Unfortunately, we haven't seen them get up yet. Not and yet. I'm not going to, not yet. We will, in Jesus' name. Yeah. But uh, these signs follow those that believe. That's they will right. lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. So the first sign of a believer is they're going to lay hands on people. And you're going to get the focus off of you of how how's it going to look. Get the focus off of yourself. Get your focus on Jesus. Right. I think what a lot of people may not um, realize, because I didn't before, 
Like I said, I've been a Christian all my life. I was Catholic, I was Lutheran, um, but I didn't have this kind of teaching. So in my mind, these things happened because, oh, that was Jesus. Right. That was for him to do. What I didn't understand that I, I am still in the process of learning now is that when Holy Spirit, when Jesus sent Holy Spirit, to come and live inside of us. And Jesus is telling us that we are to go and do these works. And greater are the works we're going to do. We're going to do greater works because there's a greater number of us. Jesus was fully God and fully human. So Amen. he could only be when he was here on earth as in human form. He could only be in one place at one time. Which means he could only be operating as a person would, touching one person at a time. If we, as the body of Christ, really knew our identity, our authority, and the power that is living in us, Holy Spirit power, um, it's the same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. The same Holy Spirit lives in us. So all of us would be out laying hands on people and seeing them recover, seeing them walk again, seeing them raised from the dead. This is what we were actually commanded to do. And I didn't know that for a long time. Right. So maybe that's a new teaching for someone that they have not heard in the church that they, they've gone to or the, the teachings that they've sat under. That actually Jesus, if you go to the Bible and you read it, you what will does find the Bible out say he about commands it? us to do these very same things. So yes. if you're in a place that you're not laying hands on people, that would be a good thing to get, a, if you're a Christian now, that would be a good thing to get along with the Father yeah. and ask him why you aren't doing that. Uh, if somebody's a germaphobe and they're so worried about them getting sick when they touch something, how are you going to have the authority to pray for somebody and re release the healing anointing? Uh, under the New Testament, under the New Covenant, see, in the Old Covenant, if we touch something dirty, we become dirty. Now, as a born-again believer in Christ, when we touch something dirty, it becomes clean because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Right. This is a, that's a powerful word right there. It is. If you have fear, you, you don't have a... This is a Dan Muller. You only have authority over the things that you don't fear. So if you fear that you touch something and it's going to get on you, how do you have authority to release a healing anointing the way that Jesus did? That's right. You know, Jesus touched people with leprosy, and there are people, uh, I mean, even in a, today, there's a man named David Hogan. He's a dead raiser, and there, we're going to give a teaching on that, how do you become that way? Uh, you know, Jesus gave an answer to it, saying, you know, certain things only come out through prayer and fasting, and in the Christian faith overall, I think everybody's good with the prayer part, but they don't want to really give up eating and push the plate away. And if you're just moving the plate and not in prayer, that's just called a diet. But there's a dynamic duo in prayer and fasting. It's powerful. And that's why Gene and I are doing that now. That's right. And we're not going to tell people the number of what we're doing. But for the new year, uh, there's a principle of giving. We learned this from Jonathan Shuttlesworth. Uh, giving your first fruits to the Lord. So what better time to start prayer and fasting in January for the new year. For the new year. That's how you start the year. The Absolutely. first of everything you give yep. to the Lord. Yes. So this uh, summarizes the story in Luke 7. So uh, in Luke 7, there's a centurion that his faith was so high in Jesus. He, he heard about what Jesus was doing. He knew that Jesus had authority. Uh, the centurion was a man that had authority, he understood how authority worked. And he had a servant that was sick. And he told, he said to Jesus, if you just speak the word, my servant will be healed. And that's exactly what happened. And Jesus was amazed by the faith that this man had. Yeah, it, it he, says, he the Bible says, yes. he marveled. Right. So that type of faith uh, made Jesus marvel. Uh, and then I would recommend to read uh, Mark 6, is he marvels at people's unbelief. Yeah. And 
I would read the whole story in chapter 6, and it says that he, he could do no mighty miracles except lay hands on a few people and heal them because of their unbelief. Uh, my personal belief for that is to put it in practicality. I don't think that their unbelief stopped Jesus, but what I think it did, what, what's the word that I always have a tough time pronouncing? Oh, familiarity. Familiarity. They just thought, Jesus, isn't that the carpenter's son? Isn't that the son of Mary? They wouldn't that, come That's to the him. son of Joseph. I, I believe that their unbelief was that they wouldn't come to him to mm -hmm. get prayer. Yeah. And we've seen that in our lives, that you ask somebody, can you pray for them? And they'll just reject you and want to get away from you, mm -hmm. as, fast as, you as fast as they can. So that would be a reason uh, why somebody wouldn't get healed. I want to be at a place that even if somebody rejects it, I just speak the word regardless and just say, hey, I understand you, but you are valuable. You're loved. Be healed in Jesus' name. Because Jesus spoke the word right. and somebody was healed. Uh, that's where I want to be at. Amen. And I'm saying that because later on in, in chapter 6 of Mark, people, when, when he's out of the town that everybody knew him at, when you read later on, People are coming to him, and they all, they're coming to get healed. Yes. And it says Jesus healed them all. Everyone was healed. Yes. So in Romans 10, 17, is, so you wonder how do you get your faith up? Faith comes by hearing the good news about Jesus. You have to get into his word, get into the Bible, Read about what Jesus was doing. Right. Read about what he says you can do as a believer. Uh, hang around people that have at least the faith where you're at, but I suggest to hang around people that even have a higher faith that push you to go further. Right. Because uh, if you just hang around a bunch of unbelievers and a bunch of people that just tell you, well, you don't need to lay hands on people, or you don't need to pray for them, and that just becomes your norm, that's just the type of Christian walk you're going to have. I'm, I'm not satisfied with that type of walk. Jesus paid it all, and I don't want one drop of blood to be missed out on mm -hmm. the possibility of what I could be walking in. But it's, it's really important to get into the Word, because if you don't, then you don't know what's possible. If you don't know what Jesus said for us to do, and what we're supposed to be doing, and what he already paid the price for, and what he demonstrated, he was a demonstration of what we were to Amen. become. So if you if you don't read the word and you don't know what we're to become, then you don't know what to do and what to expect. So you get in the word and then you you thank the Father for it and you build your faith in it through reading it and through praying and and talking to the Father about it. If there's something in there that doesn't seem um, possible to you, you know, if if you don't believe that if you laid hands on someone, they would be cured of cancer, then that's where you go to the Father and say, Lord, just help my unbelief in this. I know your word says, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. But something inside of me is not letting me receive that. So help me, Lord, with this. I mean, that's where we are. We're, we're asking him in prayer and fasting, Lord, help us with our unbelief because we want to see every person we pray for get healed Amen. and get set free and delivered. So, Lord, where, where are we missing it? Because there is always room to grow. Yes. And when we're talking about faith, how can we not talk about a man named Smith Wigglesworth? If you've never heard of him, look him up and read his stories. That'll that'll bring your faith to a whole new level. And here's a couple short quotes by Smith Wigglesworth. God wants us so badly that he has made the condition as simple as he possibly could. Only believe. Mm -hmm. Another quote from him. I am not moved by what I see. I am moved only by what I believe. Now, Smith Wigglesworth, this is coming from a man. Uh, I'll tell one or two quick stories on him. Uh, the one that stands out to me, uh, and I'm sure he's done that several times, but there's a story where there was a man that was dead, 
and he went to where he was at. I guess it was already at the funeral. Mm -hmm. And he took the man out of the coffin and slammed them against the wall. And the man just dropped down. And he kept picking this man up and slamming him, calling him back to life, calling him Damn. life to come forward again. And the man came back to life. He, he, Smith Wigglesworth raised the dead. Uh, another story, there was a woman that had a baby that died and she brought the baby to Smith Wigglesworth. And Smith Wigglesworth kicked the baby Kicked, them, kicked the baby right back into the mother's arms. The baby was dead and the baby came back to life. These are mind-blowing things, but it's real. Yeah. And there's um, there's a few, I mean, we know David Hogan, but there's other people that, um, what is his name? Surprise us at all. Mm -hmm. When he, he saw, he has seen several people i believe our friend chris he told us a story when he was in africa there was a baby that a baby. was di that died yes. and he was holding on to the baby and the baby came back to life yes yeah so there's just uh randy clark always says he has a book called there is more be glad for where you're at in your walk but just don't ever be don't be complacent don't and don't just settle and no. don't ever get into complacency or just contentment where you're at because there's so much more yes go after it go after everything every promise in the every Bible. promise that god makes us in his word go after it go after it with everything you have in you because those promises are for you and they're for the for they're for everyone they're for everyone who receives christ and has holy spirit living in them they are for you and you can affect people who don't even believe and it can bring them to faith. If you pray for an unbeliever and they get healed or they get set free from something, that's the very thing that could bring them right into faith. So, right. I mean, go after these things because this is what God promised us. Right. Jean and I have seen healings before. We don't really have time to uh, talk about that. Uh, just a real short testimony for herself. There was a lady in the hospital. Was that when mom was in there? Mm -hmm. Yes, when, her, when Sana, the yeah. mom was in the hospital. And she's doing great now. Hi, mom. God bless you. Uh, there was somebody in there. And we were on the elevator. We got off and we asked the family if we could, if there was anything we can pray for them about. And the lady's mother, her name was Barbara also. She was... Uh, completely out of it. Well, uh, she was on life support. Yeah, she was on life support. She was she was on yeah. life support, and she was incoherent. She hadn't spoken. She hadn't eaten. She had nothing. Right. Thank they, you for clearing that up. Yeah, More than just completely yeah. out of it. She was yeah. on life support. And they said she was going to die. Right. They said so, she was going to yeah. die. And we joined hands with the family, prayed a very quick prayer of healing for her mother, and the very next day, Miss Barbara was awake. They said she was up and she had a pen and she was writing stuff out mm -hmm. to the family. Uh, Gina had a, another friend. We went and prayed for her grandmother that it was having uh, severe heart trouble. Yeah, she was supposed to have surgery on her heart. They said if they, they had to perform this surgery or she was going to die. So I asked my friend if it was okay if we came to the hospital to pray, and she said, please. She said, because she's in such poor condition, they won't even perform the surgery. So she wanted us just to pray that she would be well enough to be able to have the surgery. And the grandmother was very willing. When we came in the room, she was Absolutely. excited to see us, and we all joined hands and prayed. And I think it was three days later. I think it was three days later, she ended up going home Amen. and she didn't Thank need you, the surgery. And she lived several years after that, just living a regular life, Praise driving God. and doing all the things she normally did. Yep. So she wasn't hindered. She wasn't sick. She was living her life. So yeah, they were. Right. So that's just two testimonies yeah. from Jean and I to make it more personal for you. Uh, I'm going to end it on this note, which, which you don't ever want to do. And I know you're going to agree with me with this. If you pray for somebody and they don't get healed, do not ever, please, do not ever put it on the other person that no. they didn't have enough faith 
or if there's a family, I mean, we have lost friends and we know people that have lost, you know, their husband or, you know, a few people lost their husbands, people have lost children. Yeah. Do not ever look at that family mm -hmm. and don't ever tell them that they didn't have enough faith. No. And don't ever think in your own heart, oh, well, if they would have had more faith, then that wouldn't have happened to them. If your faith is that high, go and pray for the people. Right. Go and pray for that person. And you speak the healing over that person. Sometimes people, when it's so personal, it, they may not really have the faith for that when they're seeing it every day. And that's why it's so important to have the body of believers. Yes. So don't take responsibility for yourself. That's what Gina and I always do. When we're not seeing it happen, we go right into the Father's arms with it and talk to him about it. Yes. Because Jesus, what he's basically saying is, if you can see things the way that I see it, you'll do what I'm doing. Amen. Yes. And I think that I think probably that wraps it up there. Up. Yeah. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this, and we'll see you next week. Love you guys. Love you guys.